yeah, it feels really good to be uh, in a Padres uniform when I did it. That was that was my first no hitter I've ever thrown in my life. So um, pretty crazy that it comes on the big league stage and I'm in a Padres uniform. I've made I've internalized a lot of my my thoughts and stuff, and, and I'm making the challenge about me against myself. So um, being able to keep myself in check every inning and um, focus on one pitch at a time, and that's something that Larry, um, you know, kept bringing up to me as we got into the seventh inning on was, you know, don't think, don't try to do more, just execute one pitch at a time, and like you've been doing all game. <clears throat> um, I think I looked up in the uh, in the sixth inning because I'd only thrown six innings my last couple starts. Um, actually, I threw five in my last spring start, six in my last you know, my first start of the season. Um, so as the sixth inning came around, um, I thought my pitch count was a lot higher than it was, and I knew I had no hits, but you know I figured to get six, seven, eight, and nine innings in. Um, you know, I was going to be way too high in the pitch count. So I was kind of at peace with the idea that I would go six, seven, you know, shutout innings, you know, hit list, and then hand it over to the pen and see if they could finish it off. And I looked up at the scoreboard to see what pitch count was. And I was at like 67 and I was like, oh, we got some room to work with. So, um, you know, and in Vic, I, I can't say enough about Vic. Um, he's just so good behind the dish. And I think what I, what I was so, you know, impressed with was, was his, his feel for the, the hitters and what they were going to do. It was like he seemed like he knew exactly when they were swinging, when they weren't swinging, uh, which guys we needed to throw chase pitches at OO and which guys we can go in the zone at OO to, to get, try to get control of the count. Um, you know, on multiple occasions, he, he told me in between innings that, you know, this guy coming up here, he was like like a scientist. He was like calculating how many guys until we get to the top of the order so that by the sixth, seventh inning, it would be, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, you know, like just, just doing all the math and, and figuring out which guys we need to, you know, be more aggressive with fastballs and sinkers or cutters to get, you know, quick one pitch outs to try to save a few pitches here and there. Um, you know, he just did such a good job back there and it made my job so easy just to, you know, let him call the game and just try to execute pitches. It just feels so good to show these guys that I'm here to compete and that, uh, you know, with all the distractions that there can be playing at home and living in your own city, I'm, I'm ready to play. And, um, and with those guys behind you, I mean, they do they do such a good job of getting you an early lead and allowing you to go out there and just be aggressive in the zone and attack, um, you know, and <laughs> without knocking them. I mean, it was kind of nice that we were going one, two, three offensively so I can get back out there and stay fresh because, you know, had those innings gotten a little longer, who knows uh, how it would have turned out. But I was able to get up and get going, you know, with short half innings. So got me an early lead and then we just rode it out to the end. So but it, feel, it feels incredible, you know. The city of San Diego has shown me so much love even before I came to the Padres. Just, you know, a San Diego kid that made it to the big leagues. Um, you know, so it feels even better to be able to do it in the Padres uniform and uh, selfishly be able to do it for my city and have everyone know that the kid from Grossman High did the first no hitter. Hi, Joe. Congrats. What else have you scripted for your uh, San Diego storybook, your storybook homecoming? <laughs> I don't know. Um, hopefully an all-star game. Hopefully a <laughs> first World Series ring. Uh, there's a lot of things I want to work on, but right now I'm exhausted. All I can think about is is getting some recovery and, and seeing how I feel tomorrow. I threw a lot of breaking balls tonight. Um, you know, I don't think I threw a single fastball. I threw a couple cutters in the last two or three innings, but uh, we were just going to empty the tank out with my best stuff, and the slider was the was the go-to weapon there. So I'm pretty tired, but um, you know, we, we want to be strong throughout the year. This is a cool you know benchmark and a cool you know accomplishment for me, but. You know, we're two weeks into the season, so we're not even two weeks into the season. So, um, you know, come a week or two, this is going to be old news. And, uh, <laughs> you know, people are only going to like you for what you're doing currently. So I got to get back, um, you know, get some rest, enjoy tonight and, and celebrate with my family and uh, my teammates and then get ready to get back to work tomorrow. I don't know if it's ever going to be old news but when the Padres are the last team to get the no hitter. It's been 8,000 games and fans have been waiting, but I mean, there's been so many Padres who have almost had that no hitter. Is there one that you recall watching? No, I don't remember. I know there was one recently, right? A couple within the last couple of years that, that got pretty close. Um, maybe Chris Young, maybe, maybe it's a GM across the way from you tonight. I don't know. No, I'm not positive, but um, yeah, I just, I don't know. So much of this, like so many of these questions, I'm going to have better answers for you tomorrow. I just, I'm still like, you know, it, like my teammates, I feel like are more excited than I am right now. I'm just coming <laughs> down up that high and uh, physically, mentally exhausted. So I'm not even able to really put my thoughts together that well. Uh, are you superstitious? Can you kind of take us inside that dugout? Did you talk to any of your teammates outside of, uh, or outside of Caratini? 
yeah, I, I mean, I kept it as normal as I could throughout the game. Um, you know, I'm not very superstitious. I have routines for sure, but, um, you know, I, I always have one of my little superstitions, I guess, or part of my routine is, um, well, I do drink, I drink a lot of water one. Um, I think I went through 11 or 12 water bottles tonight and I always keep them empty ones next to me so I can kind of keep track of how many I'm drinking throughout the game. Um, and I had to piss so bad in like the fourth or fifth inning. Um, but I couldn't, that was the one thing I didn't want to break, like the superstition of it didn't want me to have to go, you know, use the bathroom in the middle of the start. Um, but I always, I, I chew gum between innings. Um, something, one, just to keep getting some like moisture in my mouth, um, you know, and just kind of keep giving me something busy to do in between innings. Um, but I always, before we start, I'll line up nine pieces of bubble gum on my towel. And every half inning, I'll come in and I'll eat a piece and then I'll spit it out as I'm going out of the dugout. And I kind of like that. So I try not to look at the scoreboard as much as I can. Um, so I kind of mark my innings by the, the little pile of gum that I spit out right there. And tonight's the first night that I got to chew all nine pieces. So. What do you do with a baseball? And just if you can d detail, what does this mean to you personally? They can't. It took everything from me. It took my glove, my cleats, my hat, my ball. Um, I think they'll probably, you know, uh, authenticate it and some of it will go off. But I'd like to keep some of those things. Um, I don't remember what, what was the second part of your question. What does this mean to you personally? I know from like a team standpoint, like it's, it's, it's a game, but what does it mean to you from a personal standpoint? Um, it's super special. I mean, you know, I've always wanted to throw a no-hitter. I never even threw one in high school, Little League, um, you know, all throughout the minor leagues. I've come close, but um, I don't think anything past the six or seven. <clears throat> so it feels really good to do that, but I think more so like prove to yourself that you're capable of doing it. Um, you know, it's always been a goal of mine to go nine innings and, and throw a shutout or a complete game. Um, you know, watching Lance Lynn do it last night. I watched Jameson Tyone do it multiple times when I was in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, that's just an accomplishment to be able to take the ball and end the game, you know, start the game and end it. Um, that's a big accomplishment for me. And, you know, to have the, the fact that no hits on top of that is extremely special. Hey, Joe, I wonder if you could just elaborate on the fact 53 years over 8,200 games. You grew up in San Diego. Now Jill Musgrove is the first pitcher in Padre history to throw a no-hitter. What does that mean to you as a San Diego kid when you look back on all those Padre teams you grew up watching? What does it mean to have your name in the record books? Yeah, it's incredible. Um, it's cool. Like you said, it's cool to know that I'll always be recognized as the first one to do it. Um, and I think a no-hitter, regardless of where you're playing, is, is really special. But um, – it almost seems like this was meant to be, you know, to come over and, and have a good start to the season in my first outing and, um, you know, do it in my second one to get the no hitter. It's, uh, you know, so part of it doesn't seem like it's real, you know, I feel like it was meant to be, um, but I have, it hasn't really all set in yet. You know? So I need to clarify, did you hold it for five innings? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's the accomplishment of the night, man. Uh, you just don't go in the middle of a game. Couldn't do it, man. And I know Blake Snell sat on that rail the whole game and did not move. I watched, yeah. I watched him the whole game because I thought about it in like the eighth inning. I was just kind of looking around, trying to like keep my mind busy and not think about the fact that I hadn't given up a hit. And I saw Blake sitting there in the same position with his feet on the rail still. And I was like, I wonder if he's moved at all today. And then after the game in the shower, he was like, dude, I didn't move that whole game. He's like, in the fourth or fifth, we were about to get up. And I grabbed more home and pulled him back down. Um, but it's cool, man, and just to feel how excited my teammates are and how happy they are for me is, uh, is a really good feeling. The, uh, what do you think about on the bench? I mean, you're alone for most of it. What are you thinking about as the innings wear on? <clears throat> um, well, I like to – I try to review, like, the inning that we just, you know, had. Um, for the first, you know, minute or so when I walk in the dugout, I'll, I'll get my gum, have some water, throw my towel on, and then I like to just sit there and, and just breathe. And just try to calm my, get my heart rate down as fast as I can and just let my mind relax. You know, I'm so focused out there and, and it's you only have so much bandwidth out there to, to really dial it in in a game. So, you know, trying to take my mind off of that and just relax a little bit. because I have no problem turning it on. Man. I can hit a switch and get going. So, you know, up until we get about two outs, I'm just kind of relaxing. You know, I'll go over a couple of bats that we just had or I'll, you know, have some internal talk about where I need to be mentally. Um, and then with two outs, me and Vic will get together and we'll talk about, you know, the first three guys we're facing that inning and how we want to start them off, what we started them off with last time, um, you know, whether we think they're going to be aggressive. If the inning goes long, you know, we have a long half inning, they might come out more aggressive. If it's a quick inning, you know, there's just all different kinds of things that we're talking about there. But uh, for the most part, it's just getting my heart rate down and, 
and give myself a chance to catch my breath and then, uh, you know, regroup in the two outs and get ready for the next inning. I haven't really gotten a chance to talk to him much. I mean, got mauled on the field. He was the first one to embrace me. Um, and it just felt good, man. I know he wanted that as bad as I did. Um, but there's, I mean, there was points in the game where in very few times, but there was times where he called a pitch and I, you know, we have a, a signal for me to, to switch locations. So the same pitch, but a different side of the plate. Um, you know, if he calls it away and I want it in, I, I have a signal I can give him to where we don't have to put any more signs down. It just means move to the other side of the plate. And, you know, he kind of looked hesitant and didn't want to go there. So I stepped off and I said, yeah, you, you call it. Whatever you feel is right, you know, I'll throw. Um, you know, in the two, three times we did it tonight, it worked out well. So, um, you know, he's got, I'm going to, we're going to talk a ton, you know, tomorrow, I'm sure tonight, but, um, you know, this is his, I think it's his second one. I know he caught one. Um, in, um, I think he caught Alec Mills in Chicago. Um, so he's experienced it before and he did a real good job and everyone in the dugout really did a good job of just being normal, you know, keeping the energy the same, not building it up and not making it real tense in there. Um, you know, just keeping a good flow to the game and Vic was, was great. So we keeping the Vic, the scientist? Yes. Thank you. We got time for a couple more, then we got to get Joe out of here. We'll go to Troy Hirsch. And then in the uh, last couple innings, th there were some hard hit balls hit at uh, Jerickson Profar, Cronenworth, Will Myers out there. Did Was there a hit or a, a contact that you thought, okay, that was it, it it's over? Every one of them, man. <laughs> I, thought the, I thought the line just, sometimes, you know, you don't know. I'm usually pretty good at, at figuring, at, at peeking behind me and seeing where the guys are, like whether we're in shift or not, knowing that if there's a comeback or hit to me, if it's to my right or left, like which guy or which side is there a player on where I don't need to like, reach and stab for it and take a chance at deflecting it. Like knowing where we're going to have a guy behind me, but um, you know, I got so locked in that I wasn't really checking and I gave up a line drive. I think the Trevino one that went to second base, um, I thought that might've been it, but sure enough, I had a guy there. And uh, just finally, uh, some people say no hitters, you have to have some luck involved, but this one didn't seem like there was any spectacular plays or almost any luck involved. Did you see any luck involved at all in this one? Yeah, I hit Gallo in the knee with a cutter, and maybe if I didn't hit him, he might have gotten a base hit. <laughs> so uh, saved a couple pitches and uh, didn't give up a no-no. That's a good way to look at it, Joe. Congratulations. Thank you, buddy. Thanks. Joe, what did you think of the defense behind you tonight, particularly Kim's Kim's backhand play in one, yeah, one of the big backhand play? I think out of fourth inning early on in the game. Um, yeah, that was huge. I mean, that was the one where I thought that's a tough play. There was one a fly ball that Cronenworth was like leaking out in the deep right field. Um, I thought that one might have had a chance to drop. Um, it's just solid, but I mean, that's it, man. I, I rely on my defense a lot and I trust them a lot. So, um, you know, I'm always giving heads up when I'm throwing pitches that are, you know that produce a lot of ground balls to certain sides of the field. I try to, you know, get those guys a heads up so they're ready for it. But we got a good defense, man. And that's what allows me to have success like I've had the last two starts is, you know, not being afraid to be in the zone and challenging hitters and making them swing the bat, um, knowing that I got a good defense behind me. So.